there aren't a lot of functioning democracies around the world that work this way, where you can basically uh, have millionaires and billionaires bankrolling uh, whoever they want, however they want, in some cases undisclosed. Uh, and what it means is ordinary Americans are shut out of the process. But there's President Obama in 2013. I have to agree with the man. You don't want ordinary Americans shut out of the process and let millionaires and billionaires make all the decisions. But that's happening in a place that you're not being told it's happening, the environment. In fact, a new Senate report called the Chain of Environmental Command, how a club of billionaires and their foundations control the environmental movement and Obama's EPA, has some pretty startling revelations about how literally billionaires and some millionaires are deciding what environmental policy is going to be in this country. They're colluding with the EPA and they are masking the source of their funding to pretend that all these different environmental groups are in fact independent citizen funded uh, action groups when in reality they've got billionaires writing the checks. It's called the Billionaires Club in fact in the report and it's an exclusive group of wealthy individuals who direct the far left environmental movement. The members of this elite liberal club funnel their fortunes through private uh, foundations to execute their personal political agenda which is centered around restricting the use of fossil fuels in the United States. Well, since this is a Senate report earlier today, I had the chance to speak to a senator directly involved with this, Senator Vitter of Louisiana. This is what we had to say. There are billionaires and millionaires, huge foundations that are at the top tier of this network. And it's a very complex, convoluted network and organization, I think, to completely defeat transparency and not allow anybody to effectively follow the money. But I think we did in our work pretty effectively, and we showed how this club of billionaires directly impacts and guides Obama EPA uh, policy. Now, it seems like, from what I could read in the report, there are a few massive foundations who then funnel money into kind of an intermediary foundation that then funnels more money, all of this dealing with environmental policy and, and with environmentalist Correct. regulation, to a bunch of other smaller organizations to give the appearance of this being a more broad spectrum grassroots kind of an or a situation. Exactly. And that is one of the goals, I think, of how this is set up. I think the top goal is complete lack of transparency. But through that, they have the ability to essentially buy grassroots activism in various places and make it try, try to make it look like local, genuine activism, where it's really bought and paid for uh, with billionaires' money from New York and Washington, D.C. and California. Bold Nebraska is a perfect example. Bold Nebraska is a grassroots organization set up and funded through this network with this elite money from New York and Washington and California. It passes itself off as very, very local and homegrown, uh, but it's clearly not in terms of this support. And it's set up almost exclusively to try to defeat the Keystone XL pipeline. Now, this is sort of like the environmentalist equivalent of a false flag, Senator. Uh, is, is there any hope that this transparency might uh, affect their ability, these massive organizations, their ability to direct environmental policy? Well, uh, this is only the beginning of our work. This report brings up a lot of additional questions, all of which we're going to pursue and track down. But certainly we should have a more transparent system. This complete lack of transparency also raises significant legal questions in terms of the IRS code, in terms of these foundations uh, contributing this money or, or the folks contributing to the foundations completely tax exempt. So there are a lot of serious questions here that we're going to follow up on. All right, Senator Vitter, thank you very much for your work on this and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. So as you heard in my talk with the senator, a big part of this is how they funnel the money. So let's follow the money for a minute. This was in this report. I thought this was fascinating. Ellis said, I know you, you, you agreed. This was pretty um, amazing how they do this. So you have these big money foundations, the Packard Foundation, Climate Works, the William and Flora, uh, Flora Hewlett Foundation, also the Schmidt Foundation of Google fame. They funnel money into this, the Energy Foundation. And we're talking, look, $350 million going up this way, $37 million. Going, and this is a lot of money that goes to the Energy Foundation. Then that goes to the Green Tech Action Fund. This actually lobbies for policy change. It, it gives money out here. And these are donations, by the way, in the 2010 and 2012 election cycles. It gives money here to groups like the Sierra Club that are active political organizations. They're saying we want the Democrat to get the votes, not the Republican. But you see, why is all of this necessary? Why these intermediary steps? Guys, 
To me, it seems pretty clear they're trying to hide the hand. They don't want people to know that billionaires are writing tens of millions of dollars of checks to the Green, uh, to the Energy Foundation, which then gives it to the Green Tech Action Fund. That's, they want people to think that this is a bunch of hippies who love the earth. That's exactly what it is, and we've actually seen this happen on the left with another group, a group called Democracy Alliance, which was George Soros's group. And basically, they had this same similar system where they had a lot of these anonymous wealthy donors coming together. They'd put all their money in this one group, and then someone else would dish it out so that they could remain anonymous. And there, it is, of course, I think you could argue that people do this try and remain anonymous type of thing on both sides on numerous issues. But it is particularly ironic that you have people. People on the left who despise secret money make it going through all these efforts to keep their donations secret. I just wanted to clarify this is not an, an anonymous giving per se this is right. hiding where right. the money is coming from mm -hmm. which is different this is creating the perception it's not saying I don't want people to know that I gave this organization it's let's run it's basically money yeah, laundering it's yeah. political money laundering it's exactly that's right. basically what this is and what what's even worse about this cabal here is that there are people who work within high levels of the EPA that are embedded in the EPA that are also in bed with these organizations and they're in violation it's ethically uh, completely off the charts they're in cahoots with these organizations and they're so they're able to affect policy directly for example Bob Sussman was a senior policy counsel for the EPA he came over from the Center for American Progress huge Obama lefty or you know pro Obama lefty organization he's a senior policy analyst Lisa Jackson the administrator remember her remember the whole secret emails um, scandal they were writing emails under false names to because you, every email in, in an executive level, you know, position is is archived and it, until it, they destroy the hard drive. Right, right. right. <laughs> but they were using false email addresses so that they could communicate with their fellow environmental buddies outside the EPA in cahoots to to to, to put forth their agenda, whether it's Keystone Pipeline or destroying the so coal industry the, or whatever. It's a total cabal. So, so is the issue here the, uh, the private money supporting uh, specific public policy ideas that then tries to influence? Politics, because that's how that's how the entire U.S. political system no, that's, works. That's, or is it, or is it the irony? Because because if you do this, because you do this on the right, you can draw up a similar chart about a bunch of billionaires who give money to specific groups. That money gets funneled to a couple other groups and gets distributed to grassroots organizations. It seems to me that the, 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 the difference is that the reason we bunk, the reason we started with President Obama talking right, about this is that right, one is the they create the perception of, right, on the left yes. and on environmentalism yes. specifically. They right. are running what I would call a massive deception operation against the American people. Look, a lot of people know that when you're talking about different industries, there's a lot of money from the top and funded from different places. But when you're talking about environmental groups, they are very clearly trying to create the perception of these groups being just people getting together right. talking when it's the CEO of Google and the CEO of other major companies writing all the checks. But that, I mean, that happens in the, the war against Obamacare, too, because there's a lot of grassroots anti-Obamacare groups that I completely support everything they're doing, that if you trace their money, it's going to go back and to it's, one well, or two well, people. But, but it's even more insidious than that, because forget about the fact of perception, which I think you right. agree. that the, I, left, yes. the left wants yeah. to create the perception that yes. doesn't I, happen I think, on their I side. I think that's the big but story. But Anthony, there's also, there's also a collusion that exists here between Obama's EPA. This is from the report. Under Obama's EPA, uh, they've given more than $27 million in taxpayer-funded taxpayer grants to major environmental groups, notably the Natural Resources Defense Council, Environmental Defense Fund, two key activist groups with significant ties to senior EPA officials, and they've collected more than $1 million of funding each. Uh, yeah. These yeah. groups yeah. essentially own the EPA, it's which has a free to hand politics. to make all environmental policy. It's pay to play, it's pay to play politics, and unfortunately, though, I do think that that happens a lot more than we all wish it did on both sides. Uh, yeah. But this, for me, the main story here is that I do think it's ironic that they're doing this when they try to be the loudest on how it's horrible. But either way, you can't look at any pay-to-play situation and say it's okay. I don't care who right. does it. That type of behavior is unacceptable, and they're clearly doing it here. Well, the difference yeah, left, is... Left that, or right, it, left or right, it's a problem. Yes, but the difference is the level of sanctimony. They're so sanctimonious when they claim that the, the right is doing it and the evil Koch brothers and all of that. When they're doing it, if not worse, because they're going above and beyond to hide it. I don't think you see that level of deception necessarily on the right. They come out and say, look, we, are, we, we, we don't like this policy, we're going to fund it, and why are we hiding it? I think you call it deception because you don't like the, no, the, what I it's think, funding. No, give me an example I, of I work, right look, where I just, at this I work level. in the nonprofit industry, when and I know that this heard, is how this yeah, money okay, is When was the last time you heard a Republican say, it's all those right. millionaires and billionaires right. yeah. who own our policy? No, no, you don't that's, hear. no that's why I'll come back to it. I think the, the, the story here is the incredible irony of the president. No, hypocrisy, pushes, not yeah, irony. Correct. Hypocrisy. Yeah, hypocrisy the hypocrisy of the left that stands back and says, oh my, you know, look at the way that money controls politics. Right, about it. Then they don't let this happen.
Where it's pay to play, it's wrong left or right, abs absolutely, and she need to stamp it out, need to find it, and need to criticize it and continue to yell but about it. But also, when it comes to environmental policy, people also have this perception that somehow this is not the case, and they try very hard to create that perception, and I think that's bordering on fraudulent, really. I mean, they're trying to tell people that all these different groups are getting smaller dollar donations, and this is people coming together. For example, you mentioned there are some large groups, and obviously the Koch brothers do a lot of charitable stuff as well as a lot of political I stuff, yeah. but there are Tea Party groups that are unaffiliated. And they're just gathering across the country, and they've been doing that for some time. When you're talking about these a environmental lot. groups, the main ones, according to this report, unless this is wrong, it is all big time, big money uh, foundations writing all the checks. And that's just not yeah. what people think. And I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. It's a PR problem. Uh, that the right has is that that they sort of look like they're the only ones that are the, the big guys with big billions of dollars flowing around, and on the left, it's all the small people. Absolutely. Whether or not it's fraud versus PR. Well, I said it borders on is being it, is, fraudulent. Yes, yes. I'm not saying is, it's is, legally is, is fraudulent. A big question. I'm saying it's, it's, it's a big it's, question. I think, though, really quickly, too, when you look at the politics of this thing, I do think there's something to be said that you have these far-left environmentalist groups clearly colluding with the Obama EPA. That's why you've seen these CO2 regulations, a lot of people would say. Yes. Why you've seen the Keystone XL push right, back. Yeah. And the people that they're hurting by doing this are their own guys. It's Mary Landrew. It's in Colorado. It's Mark Udall in Colorado. It's people in West Virginia, Natalie Tennant, because they are forcing so hard this far left environmentalist agenda and the people it's going to hurt are their own guys. And there are some questions actually that are being raised about the legality. I don't mean yes. to pull a Harry Reid and suggest that I heard somebody <laughs> say that Romney hasn't paid tax. <laughs> Not that kind of a question, but there are some questions about the legality of all of this. It's pretty illegal. Will you let me do Misfit Stories now, sir? Let's go. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. We have the Friday edition of Misfit Stories next.